Wonderful edition of the PHNX D Back Show. And when I say wonderful, I mean the ones that we get to hear that song. Uh, of course, my name is Derek Monty, occasionally known as your mayor of PHNX. This is always this man, he's always known as my vice mayor. Also, your Thunderstick, Jesse Friedman. Big win for the Arizona Diamondbacks. I mean, I don't want to get too excited about the Diamondbacks winning a series against the Rockies, but with the way things look there for a minute. This is this is a big <laughs> win for this team. At least they get the monkey off their back of that five game losing streak and they get things headed in the right direction before St. Louis comes into town uh, with a big series win against the Rockies. I don't know what I was more impressed by when it came to this game is the fact that uh, the bullpen once again kind of did their thing, uh, especially Bryce Jarvis, who was incredible both on the mound and especially fielding. And, you know, that yeah. highlight real uh real play that he made but uh, i mean this this they continue to confound me with their inability to score runs late and right when you think that they can't uh they do they they do and it's with the guy that's really been struggling gino who despite some early success really has been uh pretty pretty bad both at the plate and in the field himself recently especially in the series yeah, I I, n- I never want to put too much on like the thirteenth game of the season. I mean, in we the grand to. scheme of things, it's today what we're, what today wasn't is. that important of a baseball game. Oh my God. But but still, I mean, there's something to be said for how much different six and seven feels than five and eight. It's like if huge. the Diamondbacks were five and eight and they had just lost a series to the Rockies after getting swept by the Braves. I mean, it, it's it's a pretty dark time for the Diamondbacks yeah. right now. I think, but. Right. Just with, you know, the that uh, comeback that they were able to make at the end of this game, something that has been done to them a lot in recent days to actually be able to do that against an opposing team. Uh, it was it was huge. And I know it wasn't pretty necessarily for Kevin Ginkle there in the in the ninth. But no. uh, but he got the job done. And I mean, that's kind of the, the theme of this whole series for me. Like none of this was really pretty for the Diamondbacks. They still made no. way too many defensive mistakes, which we're going to get to later in the show. But at the end of the day, you had to go in and and at least take two out of three from the Rockies and the Diamondbacks check that box. Uh, there's a lot of people here saying stressful. Stressful would be a great way to describe this particular yeah, game. That is fair. It was stressful in a lot of different ways. It was stressful right out of the gate. Tommy Henry bent. And when I say bent, he bent bent quite a bit right away he threw in the 32 first inning. pitches in the yeah. in the first inning it was uh it was a rough go for tommy henry out of the gate the command was really all over the place and then credit to him i mean he managed to he managed to settle in i mean this is back-to-back starts for him where it's been two earned runs over five innings yeah. which i mean it's not necessarily spectacular but if you're you know if, if you're number five starter or I guess uh, uh, Ryan Nelson and Tommy Henry, or uh, I guess Tommy Henry is sort of in matter. the five spot right They're now. Just... Uh, if yeah, if I mean if if he can give you that until you have Jordan Montgomery and Erod rejoin this rotation, I mean that's that's good, right? Like that'll give you a chance to to win games, and the Diamondbacks were able to win this game uh, in large part because of that. Uh, Mark is right. That was the first comeback win of the season. It was the first time I think the Diamondbacks were able able to generate some key runs late uh, that that yeah. allowed them to come back from losing the lead. Uh, but Tommy Henry, again, uh, he bent so much. He has that little white line that plastic has on it when you, when you bend it in half, but he did not break five innings pitch, four hits, three runs uh, allowed two of them earned three walks, six strikeouts, 95 pitches thrown. I think the thing here with even the wins, if you want to be, I guess, a naysayer about it, when, if you want to, if you want to look on, on the bad side to them winning, this series in these two games is this was against the Rockies and both of these games are games that they barely won. Uh, I mean, they did do a good job of holding the opposition, uh, you know, limited on, on hits and runs in both of these games, but still it's the Rockies that first inning for Tommy Henry against a team with a more potent offense would have gone very, very sideways on him instead of him just allowing, you know, the, the one run there early and, and 
you know, to his credit, he did a great job of getting out of it. More so to the credit of Bryce Jarvis, who stepped in once uh, Tommy Henry left. And Bryce Jarvis was just huge for Torrey Lavello and this team as a reliever today. Not only did he make that play that I was describing earlier, but he just ate up a lot of innings right now for a bullpen that Torrey right now can't really trust a lot of pieces of. And, and the pieces that he does trust, he's going to utilize a lot, which is going to cause them to get overworked early. Yeah, it was. It, it's hard to overstate how how big Bryce Jarvis was in this game for the Diamondbacks. I mean, Tommy Henry, I mentioned he went five innings, but there's a long way to go from the fifth to the ninth, right? Yeah. I mean, basically half of the game. And those innings have been rough in recent days for the Diamondbacks. Scott McGuff, Miguel Castro, uh, you know, Luis Frias. There's been a lot of uh, unsteady, shall we say, performance from those middle relief guys so far. And Torrey just went to Bryce Jarvis and was like, hey, you know, our starter still gave us five innings. Maybe it's not the the most normal thing to call on your long reliever to pitch several innings in a close game like this. But I think I think uh, I mean, Jarvis was pitching well and Torrey just kind of stuck with him and and credit to Bryce for, for doing what he was able to do, not just on the mound. But as you said, that was one of the best defensive plays by a pitcher that I've I, ever I've seen. Never, yeah. Uh, and and Christian Walker, slow, too. We don't talk about Christian Walker. Yeah, stretching but, Chris, and but Christian that. Walker's side of this is just a given, right? Like yeah, that, yeah. like that, that's not yeah. even notable at this point. <laughs> Christian Walker always does that. Bryce Jarvis, yeah, I mean, true. he had to he had to to dart off the mound. He covered a pretty good amount of ground all the way, got pretty close to the to the third baseline when he made this throw. And he went like all Derek Jeter on him, Derek. Like this was a jump throw. Dude, it was uh, amazing. Bryce Jarvis. And the he accuracy did, was incredible. Yeah. The, it the, really the was. arm strength was incredible. Honestly, Jarvis, can we get him in in the you know, depth chart at, at shortstop. That was amazing. I mean, like I said, uh, Christian Walker did have to make an incredible stretch in order to complete that play. But like you said, we're used to seeing Christian Walker do that. This was just an amazing throw from Bryce Jarvis that, again, was a big reason why the Diamondbacks were able to keep the Rockies off the board further and, and maintain the lead that they – or not really the lead at that time. Uh, they were down, I still still believe, three to two. But uh, again, they were able to generate some runs late. Of course, they did generate runs early, which they well, just do all the did. time. I mean, that's right? another, that's another, that's like Christian Walker making scoops over at first yeah, base. It's just I mean, it's that's inevitable tax, that it's right? going to happen. Death taxes in first inning Diamondbacks. <laughs> first <runs>. inning <laughs> runs for the Diamondbacks. Uh, Corbin Carroll doubled uh, on a sharp fly ball to center. And then Lourdes Guriel, who was big for this team today, drove him in. Uh, Lourdes uh, made also a pretty good catch out uh, in in left field that I don't know if he needed to quite make it look as Lourdes difficult as Lourdes has a way was, of making but, like good plays, like like genuinely good plays look maybe like like great plays incredible some, sometimes plays because of his positioning. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course they get that first run and then Blaze Alexander with a solo home run in the second inning. Uh, he continues to be great with the bat, but. He continues to be a liability out there at shortstop. I will say that to Blaze's credit, something that we should all remember is that he really is a second baseman, right? Like that's one of the I mean, things that, I don't I, I don't think he's a I mean, where is why is he a second baseman? I mean, that's never real. Blaze Alexander's never been labeled a second baseman. Yeah, coming. But, I mean, maybe maybe there are scouts who believe that that would be a better fit for him. Yeah. But I don't but, know if that even uh, really makes sense. Isn't because, his arm his best? Yeah, his attribute? arm is his best tool. Mm, uh, so I, mean, I think the I think maybe third base. I mean, maybe maybe people would make an argument there. I don't but, think shortstop uh, is uh, is the place for him. Obviously, uh, as to what we've seen so far, because it's this, been pretty rough. Yeah, yeah, this has been rough, and uh, it furthers piece of Yoshi's agenda. As far as his Jace Peterson uh, agenda, but uh, Blaze again, he did have that home run, and you're right, he was a net zero for this game. I think they said that on the broadcast, right? Yeah, so. yeah. As long as you, <laughs> as long as you score as many or more runs than you allow defensively, I, I, I guess you can count that a win. But yeah, I mean, it continues to be a, a question for this Diamondbacks team. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Like, what are the D-backs going to do at shortstop between now and when Geraldo Perdomo returns? Uh, they did just sign Colton Wong to a minor league deal uh, right before we we went live. So I don't really think he's the solution either. Colton Wong has played all of one inning in the majors in his entire career at shortstop. Uh, so I don't really view him as a as a solution there either. D-backs are just in a in a tough spot without Geraldo Perdomo. Uh, but yes, to Blaze's credit. It, it, Get out of here, Elise. I, I You know, I'm not doing the known baseball GM thing. She says Derek is trying to cope. 
uh, and Jesse <laughs> is not having it. No, Blaze Alexander is 345 with a 976 OPS and two home runs. Yeah. So I will have no slander as to as to his relevance in the Major League Baseball. But I just think that obviously, I mean, and again, we we've kind of talked about it. Is it the yips? Is it just him? I think it has to be. It has to be about mental. This? Yeah, it has to be mental at this point. Yeah, no question in my mind about that. Really. I mean, these are plays that like. We saw Blaze Alexander doing defensive drills and whatnot throughout spring in training. Spring training, he was great. In yeah, the, in I'm the not. Field. You know, I'm not saying he's Andrelton Simmons out there, but he he never looked like a liability. I, I didn't really get that sense watching him, uh, even in even in spring training games. Right. Uh, and granted, he didn't play that much shortstop in spring training games, which I think is a valid uh, a valid point in his favor that like the Diamondbacks didn't necessarily set him up to be playing a whole lot of shortstop, but it's something he's been doing throughout his professional career. And yeah, I mean, at this point, I think it probably has gotten in his head maybe a little bit. And, and I mean, yeah, it, it, it's understandable. I mean, as we said the other day, blaze is a rookie and, and rookies sometimes look like rookies and, and we've seen a lot of those moments. Uh, but uh, as you were saying earlier to blaze's credit, the fact that he's done as much offensively as he has definitely makes it easier to stomach. Like without his bat in the lineup, like you, you'd be losing something based on what we've seen so far, especially against uh, some of these left-handed pitchers. So uh, yeah, in, in the bigger question, in, in the bigger picture, it's going to be uh, D-backs have some some decisions to make on that front here over the over the next month or so. Definitely. There was a couple of hits. I think Tucker Barnhart had one uh, in regards to the the later part of the starting lineup. But uh, it really it really looks bleak there uh, in like the seven, eight, nine uh, spot sometimes for this team. And today was kind of an example of that, especially once uh, once Blaze was removed from the game. But I think that, you know, again, the Diamondbacks right now need to manage through these injuries as best as they can. And if that means getting Blaze in there, you know, for some offense early on and then substituting him out so that you can have someone you can rely on defensively a little bit better right now, I don't think is the worst thing, you know, but uh, and and it worked out today. It's not it's not going to work out every time, but it worked out today. Again, though, there's some injuries that the Diamondbacks are trying to get through right now uh, and, and get some guys back, of course. Uh, one thing that you know uh, is going to get better at, I don't think Gino is going to struggle in the field like we saw him at times in yeah, this series. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty rough the I last mean, couple he, days. He has been really been... good out there uh, for most of this season, but lately it really feels like maybe the offensive thing is kind of impacting his defense as well. As Potentially, well. yeah. I I don't know exactly what's going on there. It's not necessarily like super easy plays that he's missed. Uh, you know, a couple of a couple of these plays where you're charging in, you know, bare having to bare hand the baseball and whatnot. It's not a super easy thing to do, but it's something that you want a major league third baseman to be able to do more often than not, and something that a. Eugenio Suarez was very very good at last season. We talked a lot over the off season about how good he was defensively for the Mariners a year ago, and people talking about how he should have been a finalist. Uh, for the gold glove award over at third base in the American league. So I will say with Gino, like there's not a ton of history of him being like a great defensive third baseman last season was, was I think more the exception than the rule. So anyone expecting him to come in and be like a gold glove caliber player at third base, I'm not sure that his full body of work over his career necessarily would, would suggest that that's really his, his true talent over there. Well, I don't care about that because the man had the go-ahead double that basically won this game for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And yeah. for that exact reason, you Eugenio Suarez is our king snake. Give it to him, baby. I don't care if he's one for five. Yeah, the go-ahead double, two key RBI, and that man uh, is our king snake. And that's mostly because he finally let me use that amazing Razor Ramon uh, video that I made of Razor wearing a Diamondbacks jersey. But uh, <laughs> this win does move the Arizona Diamondbacks one step closer to i guess all of your ultimate goal <laughs> which is me dying my we're down, hair we're down, to, we're down to 10 now oh, there it is there it is <laughs> yeah there it is well we'll see for those i still who, don't believe they can do that but yeah th- for those listening uh there's a little tracker that just popped up with my stupid face on it and purple hair and yeah, it's it's probably going to happen. The Diamondbacks just have to go 10 and 8 or better the rest of the month in order to have an above 500 record at the end of April. And if that happens, Derek, for those who missed it yesterday, did once again commit to dye his hair purple if that happens. So 
I mean, this felt this feel like kind of inevitable after the Diamondbacks brought back Lourdes Gurriel Jr. that you were going to have to do the dye to. your hair purple thing I had at, least, at least one yeah. more time, I had to at right? least offer it up. I had to put it on the table. But again, <laughs> I mean, them. It's, it's up to them. Like, this is different than last year. They didn't struggle out of the gate. I don't think I was willing. I, 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 they were kind of struggling a little bit, though. Like, there was a period of time where the season was in progress that I made this stupid bet last year. This is different. Uh, they still have their schedule really, was so daunting. Yeah, when you when you look, even they though they started well last year against the Dodgers team, and the Padres, it, I mean, the whole month of April for the D backs last year was so was so difficult. It was hard to look at and believe the D backs could really come out of it above five hundred. But they did then, and uh, you know, for all of our sake, I, I hope they do again because <sighs> we all want purple hair Derek back. I don't in our lives, like that so. that you're on that side of things. It's once <laughs> I'm again so feels on board. <laughs> like you're against me. But uh, well, let's get that graphic off the screen. I don't want to look at that anymore. <laughs> Uh, of course, we thank you guys for being here and hoping that I once again ruin my hair. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel yet, do so now. I don't want to encourage you to leave and go watch another show, but the Coyotes kind of have something devastatingly important going on over there. So make sure you don't miss out on any of these emergency podcasts we do by signing up for notifications. That way you don't miss whenever our shows go live. Of course, right now you can drop us a like. Gabby would love it if you do, even though he wasn't playing today. He's still he's rested up. Uh, drop the likes. It, it'll help him on his day off. And of course, the Diamondbacks have a day off tomorrow. So we will be back uh, with a 1 p.m. show tomorrow with a special guest. One yes. of our buddies is joining us. Uh, I don't know. Do we reveal that right now? Or? I think we can reveal it. Yeah, Jordan Schusterman from the Cespedes Family Barbecue Boys is coming back. This time, Jesse's actually going to be here I when know. he's here for an episode. So Jesse's very excited about that. Make sure you don't miss that. Of course, also, uh, make sure you subscribe on the audio side if you haven't done so yet. Drop us a review. We appreciate you guys doing that. We always appreciate the feedback. And, of course, uh, those five-star reviews definitely help us out substantially. Uh, of course, another thing that helps us out is by you going and signing up at BetMGM Sportsbook using our bonus code of PHNX. You can do so right now. And if you do, you sign up, you bet at least $10, deposit $10, bet $10 or more. And whatever you bet, if, you're, if your bet loses, you'll receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets should your bet lose. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Sign up today. Of course, check out the PHNX Bet Show. Make sure you get all the betting advice there. Maybe don't listen to me because my bets, as Jesse has saw so firsthand, bad. I'm so bad at this sometimes. It's, it's, but so I feel don't. like you're such a good emotional hedger, Derek. You're not giving yourself enough credit. No, you're right. I'm, I'm either going <laughs> to get the fair. win uh, from my team or I'm going to get money. That's Jesse, usually like the way it works You're out. unaware of his bets throughout the playoffs, but he basically would just fade the Diamondbacks if they were to lose in every single game during the whole postseason. I, I think, yeah, I think that's so, what like, was. When the Rangers you, you must have lost a lot of money, Derek. <laughs> no, he, he actually did pretty well because he'd make like eight leg parlays. And then like when we played the Rangers, for example, he'd throw in Corey Seager home run, Rangers over runs, uh, you know, Rangers to win. And he would parlay all this stuff. And if the Rangers won, he'd win like $100. Yeah. And then and then if sure. the D-backs won, yeah. we're celebrating in the streets because the D-backs won. So yeah. the Rangers series was pretty lucrative. For it, you was, it was. It was. Maybe not a lot of bets. The, the first, the first. He was winning rounds. a lot of bets. I don't, I'm sure people aren't going to like hearing that, but I will say the Phillies won too. I know. Well, yeah, I lost them too. But yeah, I mean, see again, you're either going to watch your team win the World Series or going to make some money. It's, it's, <laughs> it's big, big, big brain thinking. All right, but sign up for the BetMGM now. Use but uh, bonus code PHNX. Place your first sportsbook wager through the sportsbook mobile app for at least ten dollars. You will receive fifteen hundred dollars back in bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Available in the U.S. Call eight seven seven eight Hope and Y four six seven three six nine New York. Call one 327 Massachusetts. Twenty one plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call one eight hundred Next Step Arizona. One Bets Off Iowa. One 3 Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See betmgm.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Of course, uh, if you want that. Puerto Rico experience, make sure to check out Gila River Resorts and Casinos because nobody does it better. If you want a frosty drink in your hand sitting poolside, it's the place to do it. They also offer an authentic and immersive experience with an unprecedented level of entertainment. They have uh, 800 slot machines, over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, live table games, and of course, Arizona's largest casino sports book. Uh, also some fine dining options as well, but like I said, just sit poolside with a drink. That alone is worth the trip out there. Uh, you do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. Uh, and again, take care of yourself. 
you know, staycations. That's my thing. I hate to travel. So just go here in town, have yourself a lovely time. Uh, this series between the Diamondbacks and the Rockies was incredibly close, and we know the scores were close. But when we take a look at some of these numbers from this series, you'll see that this uh, was even closer than uh, you know the the three runs the Diamondbacks won their two games by. Uh, total runs scored here: Diamondbacks outscored the Rockies thirteen to twelve in the series. Rockies outhit the D-backs twenty-seven to twenty-six. Runners in scoring position: uh, Rockies were six for twenty-seven. Diamondbacks 5 for 23. Uh, that's a 222 batting average for the Rockies, 217 for the Diamondbacks. A 371 starting pitching, uh, starting pitching ERA through for the Rockies, 394 for the Diamondbacks. And both teams, uh, <laughs> that's not strikeouts, that's relief pitching ERA, but both teams have a 3.60 uh, relief pitching ERA. And holy cow, Jesse, uh, the margins, the margins were very tight on this series. It, yeah, they were. Uh, they were tighter than they probably should have been. Uh, I mean, they, they were not particularly tight when the Diamondbacks faced the Rockies at Chase Field to open the season. Uh, not tight at all. <laughs> and this series was very much a different story, but uh, with a similar outcome, right? The yeah. Diamondbacks took three out of four uh, to open the year and they take two out of three in this series. I tweeted this out. I mean, you look at the performances from the Rockies starting pitchers in this in this series. You get Kyle Freeland. Cal Quantrill, and then Austin Gomber today. Diamondbacks didn't do much damage against any of those guys. I yeah. mean, Kyle Freeland, yeah. I know he gave up four runs, but only two of them were earned in five innings. Cal Quantrill yesterday, a quality start, six innings, three earned runs. And then Austin Gomber today, two runs early. And then, as has often been the case, Diamondbacks let him settle in. He winds up going six innings and allowing just those two runs. So not a very inspiring offensive performance in in any capacity for the Diamondbacks. You you view Coors Field as kind of a place where you go in and you get right as an offense and yeah. you leave clicking on all cylinders. That was not at all the story of this series, but you won the series and that's that's ultimately what matters uh closer than it should have been, but uh yeah, D-backs essentially got the job done. With the Diamondbacks having the teams that are coming up beyond this. I mean, Obviously, the Rockies were a team that they had to get take care of business against, and they did. Yeah, it's just again, it's 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 as encouraging as it is. There's also a bit of concern here for the way that they beat a Rockies team that isn't really playing uh, very good baseball right now. And you know, again, is it going to be enough for them to basically with withstand this this storm, if you will, until those players that are either injured or in Jordan Montgomery's case warming up and getting prepared for the season still uh, until they can come and, you know, add some firepower to this team. Yeah, it's 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 just a matter of kind of staying afloat until then, right? At least on paper. You hope the Diamondbacks don't have any other uh, significant injuries come up in, in the next month and that there is a universe in just a few weeks where this roster starts to get healthy and starts to look very different from what the Diamondbacks have right now. Uh, but yeah, as people are as people are are saying in the chat, like an ugly series win, a win is, is a win. A win is a win. Yeah. We've seen the Diamondbacks win in dominant fashion. I think in some ways, like if you're a fan of this team, you maybe almost you really wanted to see them win a close game. Like like could they actually That's do what point. was needed late? Could in the they game? come back late and not just withstand yeah. again withstand the rest of the game based on their performance? in the first couple of innings like we've seen so far, right? And and that was kind of the problem at times. You know, there's there's the infamous Jesse tweet where he, or text message to me that I'm sure he doesn't <laughs> want me putting out there on social media that said eight runs weren't enough. And in what game, in what baseball game do you say eight runs aren't enough? But that's absolutely what it felt like with the way that this bullpen was pitching. And honestly, the fact that the Diamondbacks offense hasn't been able to get anything done late really did feel like, they weren't going to score any more runs, and they didn't in that case, right? Sometimes when the opposing team gets that run, you need to need to do some things to stop, you know, the momentum of of their comeback. And the Diamondbacks just haven't been able to do that in some of those losses where they had a lead and allowed it to slip away. This uh, again, you, you just like the the big wins didn't carry over to them going on a roll. Uh, just because these are small wins against the team they should be doesn't mean that it won't at least propel them and and you know get their confidence going for this upcoming series against the cardinals i just yeah. uh yeah i mean i'm i i don't know this is just one of those series wins that like it leaves you feeling a little unsatisfied but again i think every time the diamondbacks get somebody back it's going to hopefully add a spark 
to this team. You know, uh, Jordan Montgomery coming back, if he can come back and absolutely just shove in his first outing, you know, the the, the confidence level in the clubhouse is just going to go through the roof. Yeah, I mean, and, and just looking at the standings in the National League, I mean, not that standings are all that important at this point in the season, but they absolutely are. <laughs> I mean, last yeah. year we were tweeting them out every single night, I think, at, at this point in the season, or at least somewhere around here. Once the Diamondbacks got in the first place, it was it was a nightly occurrence for us. They to do did our have the best tweet. record in the in the National League for for a hot minute there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, some of the central teams have started out hot. Uh, the Cardinals are, are six and seven, uh, coming into both teams are going to be six and seven going into that series this weekend at Chase Field. Uh, the Reds have gotten off to a decent start. They're six and five Cubs, seven and four Brewers, seven and three. Uh, the Phillies are six and six right now. I mean, you just look at the landscape of the national league and I mean, being six and seven is not a great start, but I mean, the question that I was kind of asking is people were really, really worried about how the D-backs were starting is like, I mean, which non-division winning National League teams were going to like bury the Diamondbacks in the wild card race? I have a lot of questions about a lot of the teams that are in that yeah. wild card race yeah. in the National League. Absolutely. The Phillies are a team I, I certainly like, but beyond them, there's not really any team that I think will be a wild card team that I, I think is and way better than the Diamondbacks. The so. Marlins imploded. So, I mean, they're a team that, that is, that and is it fair. doesn't, yeah. you know, based on what's going on with their manager and the contract situation, I, I don't know if things are going to get better for that team, but we'll see. Uh, of course, everybody knows I lie and Jesse Jr., of course, is a habitual liar, but the numbers <laughs> don't lie. So let's take a look at Jesse's number for today's game or for this series. What do you got, Friedman? I got the number 72.3, Derek, which, of course, is the exit velocity on A. Eugenio Suarez's game-winning <laughs> go-ahead two-run double. 72.3. That was the third lowest exit velo yes. of any batted ball by the Diamondbacks in this game. But to be fair... A. Eugenio Suarez had some pretty rough luck batted ball wise over the last the couple shit days. Out of some balls, and they were all going right to a defender or getting caught. He also had the second hardest hit ball of this game by a Diamondbacks hitter yep. at one hundred and four point six. That one had an expected batting average of seven point or of seven fifty. Uh, that came in the third inning of this game, and uh, an exit velo of one one hundred four point six, as I said. So he, uh, yeah, I mean. And there was also yesterday, in yesterday's game, there were a couple of batted balls, including the final out of the game, that maybe got a little bit unlucky. So Same with Monday's game with, with Gino. Yeah. Base is loaded. He hits it into right center, and it, it gets caught. It just stays up too long, but it, lo it looked like he got pretty solid contact on it. We might have won the game. Yeah, the Diamondbacks yeah. have actually been pretty unlucky, and we've talked about that in so many ways. Uh, they they been, had the higher expected batting average than the Rockies in all three games of this series, including on Monday. On Monday, the Rockies had an XPA of like 200 or something. D-backs wasn't all that high either, but uh, yeah, the, the batted ball luck was not really in their favor in this series as a whole, but it was in their favor at a very uh, pivotal moment late with, with A. Eugenio Suarez coming through and, with that hit. And it's not just your nerd stats, Jesse. It's yeah. not your imaginary ex expected batting average crap. <laughs> it's also the fact that this team has <laughs> been you, very dare. unlucky with injuries. And, and in every way, I mean, Damon's constantly saying it. It felt like today, especially with uh, the way that the, the Rockies – kept getting balls to fall in just right, right fair, right on the chalk. Yeah, how many like and the chalk bags, line extra just, base uh, hits have we seen for opposing teams in these last two series? It's and crazy. it felt like in that Braves series, it felt like any time there's anything close to the uh, close to the uh, the first baseline or the third baseline that it just barely landed fair. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and this is just baseball, right? Like it these is. things just kind of have a way of – you you know you hate it for a few days because nothing's going in your favor and then suddenly you've got 11 hits in the fourth inning with like two hard hit balls and you're like yeah this rocks i love this game uh so that yeah i mean that's just that's the nature <laughs> of the sport right and the diamondbacks very much have seen uh both sides of that here in the last few days i'll tell you this though i mean the the team is having to figure out a way to win games just like tommy henry today had to figure out a way after his first inning went the way it did to get things back on track and i know that this is one of those situations where it, it might not mean a whole lot because it's early in the season but they're going they're, they're facing this adversity early on and yeah uh, hypothetically things are going to get better for them once april 19th comes around and then going forward it's almost like 
They're going to get Alec Thomas back. They're going to get, you know, Erod back. They're going to get Jerry P back. Right. And like, I feel like once again, like what I was saying about Jordan Montgomery, they're going to get these little injections of life, this little spark by getting these guys back. And they're going to get better each time these guys are back. Defensively, they're going to get better. And the starting lineup's going to get better. Obviously, starting rotation expects to get much better. And then you still don't know the impact that that Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson are going to have on this team, what their roles are going to be going forward, if they're going to get sent down to the minors to stay stretched out for depth, or if one of those guys can become a key part of the bullpen and kind of change the dynamic of that struggling bullpen that we've seen so far. They're going to need some help because I feel like Torrey's going to continue to lean yeah. on the arms that he can trust. And there's going to be a point where he's not going to be able maybe to trust McGuff or, you know, Castro in high leverage situations. And that could be the, what the Diamondbacks see right now. A lot of these close games like they had in these two wins against the Rockies. So uh, Jarvis showed out today though, and the Diamondbacks absolutely needed him too. And, uh, and he did that. So uh, of course, Piece of Yoshi says, Derek, I did not go on Baseball Savant to check out all this uh, for you to diss Jesse's nerd stats. No, I'm going I'm going to diss him hard. I'm going to go <laughs> in on him. Uh, by the way, my favorite person that went in on Jesse's nerd stats, which was unexpected, was Danielle. She really Yesterday, just... Yesterday, yeah. She yeah, kind of took really Jesse's just, head off. <laughs> it was incredible. I, I've never seen somebody come as hard as she did at Jesse well, over his nerd stats. because stat. I think some people have a false view of my baseball analysis <laughs> which is that i don't even watch these games you there. don't i you don't, don't even feel the need the to watch these games because and, uh, baseball savant and baseball reference tell me everything that i need to know and i want to declare to the universe that that is not true entirely it's mostly true i spent, but it, I spent a lot of time around you i don't know i i don't know we'll see but of course no, uh, there there is something to be said for for watching there are things you learn by watching a baseball game that that exit velos and FIP and all this stuff absolutely will not tell you. So I want to make that clear. Sometimes he watches baseball games is what he's saying. But every once in a while, I will watch the game instead of just staring at my computer the whole time. You know, a great way to yeah, watch a couple the game. days a week. Great way to watch the game. Jesse ice cold golden lager in your hand. Mm. Right. Right. Damon four peaks. The beer, I love the baseball beer, the the, of unof, the official unofficial beer yeah. of baseball, or is it the other way around? It's the unofficial official beer of baseball. They're the unofficial yeah, official. Beer it's of still uh, an incredible beer. It's the perfect beer to drink when you're out at so the yard. Good. Of course, oh, um, have you had the the bad birdie? The bad birdie is really a number one contender. Brother, it's really no. It's a number one contender for the championship. Brother, have you tried it? Wow, Wow, we should be running scared right now. Wow, we is like Roman Reigns running away from Cody Rhodes and. Bad Birdie, Juicy Gold Nail might finish the story. I we'll went see. to our friends over at Circle K, and yeah. I went to their beer cave, and they had a nice 15-pack of cans. They weren't even bottles. Mm -hmm. They were cans. Mm -hmm. And I had it, and I was like, this is a damn good beer. It's an incredible beer. It's pretty it's good. It's an incredible beer, super drinkable, and the perfect companion at the tea box in your fridge or in the batter's box. I don't know. Maybe not at a batter's box. I don't know. Maybe in a beer league. I don't know. But be sure to follow Four Peaks <laughs> on social. Of course, you can visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite beers and events check out at four peaks brew or at four peaks pub to keep up with the latest at arizona's hometown brewery must be 21 or older to drink four peaks and please drink responsibly of course uh, another great adventure you can take have some fun here in the valley is with arizona lottery uh, and their ticket promotion called arizona adventure there are three ways to play and win big some big money out there to win of course, you can play Arizona Adventure Lottery tickets featuring some iconic Arizona landscapes. You can also check in at Geolocated Adventures at 10 destinations across the state. Maybe Jesse will take you in his sick RAV4 because uh, that's what that car is for. It's for sick adventures uh, from Flagstaff to Yuma all across the state. Uh, he even goes like to other states and stuff with it. It's wild. But uh, <laughs> if, you, if you don't have a car you just for adventures, trip, Derek? Yeah, no, I mean, I, you make it sound like that. He, he, <laughs> you take adventures by yourself. You go on these geolocated. You don't even check in. You just go to these yeah. places and just view how beautiful they were he was in my part of town at a lake and he didn't even call me i don't know what's wrong with this guy but yeah because you how many times have you been to lake pleasant even though you live like what 15 minutes away i could probably count on my hand how many times i've been that's that's, probably, that's yeah. unacceptable I, Eric. I that know. is un well, i mean granted i did grow up here and that was the first time i'd ever been to lake see, pleasant you're and judging it's not me. all that you're far judging away me. Uh, but it was spectacular. That's what Arizona Lottery says this is all about. It's not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's about giving back to the state and its communities.
cities and getting you to go view some of these beautiful parts of the state. Arizona Lottery says proceeds from ticket sales support environmental conservation, among other important initiatives across the state. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Uh, also, check out, of course, our uh, our you know diehard membership if you haven't already it's a it's it's a great membership to have it kind of pays for itself right away get yourself a free item from the phnxlocker.com of your choosing get access to all of our digital content including all the writing from our writers we get yeah, that's usually who does it right the writing the writers do the writing uh you get access to all the that's, premium that is content. Uh, them's the rules them's Derek. the rules the uh you get entrance to the discord lounge where we do all sorts of fun stuff just for our diehards only get that diehard membership card discounts on all of our events including our upcoming takeover at Chase Field against the San Diego Padres. Uh, of course, it's Gabriel Moreno bobblehead night, so it's a great night mm. to join us out at the ballpark. You can get your tickets for that now over at gophnx.com. You can also get your diehard. We're kind of running membership. out of tickets for that. We're running out of tickets game, for okay. everything, Jesse. I don't Blue know if you know this. Sold out. That one, I think, is down to single the, digits the, as far as tickets available. The, the so. Cardinals draft party is sold out. I mean, we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. And you don't, I don't think you even know what that reference is from. No. See, I knew it. That's nope. something I can always count on. <laughs> 100%. I can count on this man not uh, not not knowing my references. Uh, you did bring up earlier Colton Wong. Uh, yeah. Wee -woo, wee -woo, wee -woo, yeah. Uh, being <laughs> part breaking of news. breaking news. <laughs> Arizona Diamondbacks uh, absolutely have continued to try to solve the problems that they ha have with depth right now, at least in the short term, by adding Colton Wong on a minor league deal. Yeah, yeah. Colton Wong on a minor league deal. The Diamondbacks, uh, I believe, reassigned Tim Tawa, who had been playing some shortstop in Reno. He goes down to double-A Amarillo, and Colton Wong is now going to slide in and play some infield in Reno. Uh, as I said earlier, Colton Wong has played one inning at shortstop in his major league career, so I don't really think the Diamondbacks are thinking of using him in that capacity, although I don't know for sure. Uh, maybe they're reaching a level of desperation. Where they're, <laughs> yeah, Cole, he's still young, right? He, hey, can, he can learn how to play shortstop. Kick the tires on whoever we can. He, I mean, Colton Wong was one of the best second basemen in all of baseball. Uh, not in 2023, but you know, a few years ago, back when he was with the Cardinals. In 2023, he had a fascinating season where he, uh, he opened the year with the Seattle Mariners and hit 165. And then he signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And we all know what happens to uh, seemingly washed players the moment that they don Dodger blue is they, they hit. They, they go to Cooperstown. They eventually. hit 300, 353, <laughs> 500. Jason uh, Hayward had like a 850 OPS or something. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's crazy. Everybody was like, get this guy out of baseball. <laughs> and then he goes to the Dodgers and he's just and a stud. He's just the best player in the NLS. Yeah, I mean, it was. For Colton Wong with the Dodgers, it was all of 34 plate appearances. So so do with that what you will. Uh, I believe he was with the Baltimore Orioles in spring training, but he wasn't going to make their roster. So he wound up uh, departing uh, his ties, leaving leaving the Orioles uh, back in uh, toward the end of March. And the Diamondbacks have brought him in. So, yeah, I mean, he adds depth. Uh, the D-backs don't have a ton of middle infield depth in general right now with Kevin Newman coming up to the majors. So... I suspect it's more of a depth play than than anything else, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. Um, I don't know if you guys know what's going on with the Coyotes crew out there, but just kind of looking out and seeing them do their show right now, uh, it makes me feel ill. Uh, yeah, because this situation is spir spiraling out of control very quickly uh, for our local hockey team, which might not be our local hockey team much longer. This is just a reminder once again, just like the A situation, of how quickly. Uh, this can happen, and again, not to be like not to not to get all doomsday bear here, but uh, you know the Diamondbacks need to figure out their their stadium situation and sooner rather than later, so that this does not turn into a situation like this. Maricopa County needs to do whatever they can to just get this figured out with the with the Diamondbacks. That's that's what it's down to right now. Yeah, uh, there's too much leverage here on the Diamondback side. And honestly, with what this is, what, what what is happening, it just increases the leverage that a sports team has as a reminder of how quickly they can leave and not be your sports team anymore. Um, and I hope that things go the opposite direction, especially for uh, a Coyotes team that I have come to love in in the time that they've been here. But again, they're they've been here just around the same amount of time that the Diamondbacks have existed, and it's just something to keep in mind when it comes to 
you know, supporting this team and, and coming out and, and seeing these games. I mean, we talked yesterday about the issues with them selling opposing teams peanuts that got me all heated. Uh, these are these are all around <laughs> the same idea here, which is, I mean, one way to rectify this situation and not to put the blame or or to turn it around on the fans. But one way to rectify the situation is if you love this team, come out and support this team. Don't turn into a fire Tory guy just because they lose a couple of baseball games. Don't, you know what I mean? I like, mean, I think that goes, that, feels targeted. That, go, that goes regardless. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about three of you in particular with that one, but still it doesn't matter. You get the point that I'm trying to make here. Like just be a good fan. Like there's 162 games. I understand that there might be times where it's not easy to support this team. But again, uh, it's, it's one of those things that the continued support of fans is going to be the thing that solidifies this team staying here more than the, like the fans have a lot of leverage here and the fans supporting this team really can help this situation out. Yeah. I mean, the, the diamondback situation is very, very, very different from the coyote situation. So I don't, I don't really want to draw any kind of a false comparison there. Uh, Hopefully things work out for the coyotes. It doesn't seem like that move to Salt Lake city is official by any means at this point. So Hopefully there's a way uh, for us to still have hockey in the desert because uh, even as someone who, frankly, has not watched more than a few minutes of hockey during my, in my entire life, pretty much, uh, most of it has happened in this office. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Phoenix is a market that absolutely should have all of the major sports. There's just no question with how much growth has been in this town um, you know, over the last couple of decades. So hopefully things work out there. But it does. We thought it was at least worth revisiting the reality that the Diamondbacks owner went on the record a couple of months ago and and mentioned the idea of relocating the team, right? And not in a way that was at all super worrisome, I wouldn't say. Uh, there's been some reporting. But truthful. Um, I mean, honest. And yeah. sometimes when you're honest, it does come off to be a little threatening because the fact of the matter is, if the situ- stadium situation doesn't work itself out, the Diamondbacks aren't opposed to suitors that might try to bring this team somewhere else that's willing to give them the ballpark that they're looking for right right and there yeah there's been some reporting in the last few days i know the arizona republic just had uh, a fairly lengthy story about Ernesto the some of the negotiations happening and the diamondbacks trying to get the stadium deal nailed down it still looks like by far the most likely outcome is that eventually uh those sides will be able to come to an agreement and the diamondbacks will stay put at chase field for the long haul, it's very much what we expect. But yes, the Diamondbacks owner, Ken Kendrick, said what he said a couple of months ago. And yeah, it's just a reminder to, you know, uh, value, value uh, what what's in front of you and, and you know, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, as you said, support this support baseball it. team. Support it. Yeah. And the lights, the lights show alone that I love so much just shows me how much, you know, making changes to that building can make that building cool, right? And it can make it a fun, enjoyable place. Not to mention the Korean pork belly nachos, once again, that they yes. all they got to do is yeah. get huge. That's huge. <laughs> um, Ernesto says we need to type, start buying all the peanuts. He's not wrong. That's a big key. <laughs> Elizabeth says, come out and support the team unless you're cursed. If you know, you know. Um, hello, darkness, <laughs> my old friend. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at the probables for the upcoming series with the St. Louis Cardinals because, uh, you know, the Diamondbacks, they, they get they, they get things in their direction a little bit here with Brandon Fott, who has been pretty outstanding uh, in his last start for this team, and Zach Gallen both on the mound in the series against the Cardinals. Yeah, these probables look quite a bit better than uh, than the probables graphic we were looking at a week ago uh, when the D-backs three through five starters were facing the top three in the Braves rotation. That wasn't uh, even their fault. They didn't even blow it in that series. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Brandon fought against Steven Matz, Ryan Nelson against Kyle Gibson, Zach Gallen, Miles Michaelis on Sunday. Uh, the Cardinals did just get Sonny Gray on the mound for the first time. I believe he made his season debut with the Cardinals just yesterday. The Diamondbacks will not have to face Sonny Gray in this series, which certainly bodes well for them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, on paper, you you don't you don't hate these matchups from from the Diamondbacks' perspective. Well, of course, uh, we will be back, like we said, tomorrow with our 1 p.m. show. We're going to have Jordan Schusterman joining us from Cespedes Family Barbecue. Uh, and, of course, then we will be back Friday with a postgame show for that St. Louis Cardinal series. So keep it locked right here. Make sure to subscribe once again 
to the channel uh, and and uh, sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss all this stuff. And do what Gabby said. Drop a like. Uh, otherwise, he'll throw you out in a second. And you know he can do it. You know he can do it. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> where you are. It doesn't no matter where in the country or even where in the world you are, Aaron Hughes. Uh, he'll get you out in Germany. But, of course, uh, we thank you guys uh, for Aaron joining Hughes us. Aaron isn't even in the chat. I know. I'm just, I'm just randomly <laughs> randomly bringing him up. Um, he'll love that. He'll love that whenever he listens to this. Well, I don't know what day it is for him over there. But, of course. Uh, it's probably like Saturday, right? That, like that's that's, that's, that's how, how it works, That's I think. how time zones work. I'm really bad at time zones. But, anyway. <laughs> Uh, what I'm not bad at, Jesse, as you know, is securing a very good interest rate for my home mortgage. And of course, uh, yeah. you can do that, too, with our friends at Desert Financial Credit Union. For more than 84 years, Desert Financial has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union dedicated to creating exceptional experiences by giving back to the community and by providing financial solutions that make your lives better. The Desert Financial team are financial experts and someone who you can trust, of course, with your uh, financial interests. You can look to them for checking and savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, investment options, so much more. When you open a free checking account online, you can get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. I actually, I, I heard there's some word that maybe we had a desert financial transaction of the day today. <laughs> we did. We did. Colton Wong, minor league deal. Wow. Wee -woo, wee -woo. That's, that's a big, that's a big honor to that's be huge. bestowed upon Colton that's Wong's huge. head. That's That's pretty This massive. is probably the most excited anybody's going to get about Colton Wong joining the team, aside from maybe Colton Wong. Yeah, I mean, family members. You know, it, there might be some other, some other uh, maybe a friend that lives here in were, Arizona that, that might get to forgetting see him about there or somebody but, in uh, Reno. I don't know. When are we gonna? Are we gonna see? Cole? Like, I still don't understand the depth that he adds here to the team. Really, like, is this just because at times the Diamondbacks literally have Cattell Marte out and they have Newman and you know Jace Peterson and Blaze Alexander all still in the lineup together as as that trio? They're trying to find maybe another option there when they're kind of swapping guys out in the infield? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, yeah, it, it just kind of seems like a depth addition to me, as I said earlier. To short term? Short, short stop doesn't really seem like a, a fit there. Uh, he's a left-handed hitter, so a bit of a different look from some of the other guys. Right, Kevin Newman hits right-handed. Blaze Alexander hits right-handed. Um, so I, I guess he's sort of like the backup for the Jace Peterson role. You could maybe, maybe view it that way with Peterson being a left-handed hitter. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's imminent that Colton Wong will be with the Diamondbacks, you know, in the majors in a week or anything. But if he signed with the Diamondbacks, he was presumably led to believe that he had a shot of contributing in the majors at some point sure. in the relatively near future. Like so, Elvis Andrews himself, right? Like he yeah. had a shot, I'm sure, at believing he was going to be here for major, major league. Depth. And I guess that Elvis Andrews is still out there as well. I mean, I don't know if the Diamondbacks are having any conversations in that regard, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. I'm just guessing that they saw Jace Peterson swing the bat the last couple of days and they were like, yeah, we're going to, we need to sign Colton Wong. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, kind of just like, like literally it was after that strikeout on that pitch in the dirt yesterday. I and Mike Hazen got on the phone with Colton Wong's agent, like within five minutes of that. Happening. He's <laughs> I, like, uh, we need him. I feel like it could be a situation where they do feel like, I mean, it, like there are options. They're not better options, but they're also how, how much worse can they be potentially? Right. I will say though, that as much of a diss as that not was, much. Right. Like it's, it's like blaze in the field, right? We thought blaze was, this was great for blaze. It was going to give him some playing time, all of this. And he quickly became a, a, a person that contributed to some of these losses, the diamondbacks have experienced and someone that you feel like you cannot rely on out there defensively. Now yeah. that's not been his calling card in his time with this organization, nor does it feel like it really is who he is as a player, but it's what he's going through right now. And it sucks. And thus it makes, you know, even some of the other options look better because even though they're not adding as much offensively, it's still not a situation where they're going to potentially give up a big, you know, a big error that that's, that's going to cause this team to lose yeah. more games. Yeah. I, the other thing I'll say about Colton Wong real quick is that he actually was a pretty good hitter prior to last season in 2022 with the Brewers. He had a 769 OPS at 15 homers. 2021, he had a 782 OPS at 14 homers. So he's 33 years old. He's certainly not in the prime of his career, but it, you know, it's not like you have to go back to 2018 to find the last good season from Colton Wong. Sure. So D-backs are, you know, maybe hoping for something of a, a, a bounce back there. 
Well, I can tell you something that helps you bounce back, especially from uh, any kind of ups or downs you have in your life is OG's brands. Uh, They do have their Happy Balance uh, brand, which is a balance of CBD and THC. They also have their Sleep Edition Gummy, which absolutely can help you get your sleep schedule back on track and give you a great night's rest. Of course, all of these options are available along with their two brand new products, uh, their OG's Natural and their Big OG's, which... uh, I'm a big fan of myself. Uh, to learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them, head on over to ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 or over to enjoy and please enjoy responsibly. Uh, that's all we got for today. But of course, we thank you guys so much for stopping by. We will be back again, like we said, tomorrow at 1 p.m. So do not miss out on that. Uh, and then our final show of the week uh, will be our post game show on Friday. Uh, but not not that's not all. We still have our audio only podcast that, that we'll be dropping on Saturday. Yeah. So make sure to stop by or join us for all this goodness. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. Jesse is at Jesse N. Friedman. Of course, the people's producer, Damon. He is at Damon Dog. That's D-A-W-G. We are Damon's dogs. Bark, bark. bark. Our show is at PHNX underscore D-backs, but all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys so much for your time. We appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, We'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. In the meantime, have a great night. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when the blaze moments go your way. Y'all silly like the mayor. 